understanding Ryan Pohl's vision and what a rebuild is. I think some fans are just too impatient for a true rebuild. There are just some people don't understand what a rebuild looks like in the NFL. Processes like this used to be commonplace around the league, but in today's world of instant gratification, it doesn't happen as much anymore. Teams have too much pressure to win now. Owners, fan bases, and even players are too impatient. It's hard to establish a winning culture when rebuilds usually take a lot of losing. Fans can grow impatient, and the GM can be fired before even seeing the full rebuild through. It's part of the problem with today's social media era and people's need for that instant gratification. Real rebuilds take time. Ryan Poles never envisioned a quick turnaround. He always planned for a long-term rebuild where he was going to continue building through the draft. Ryan Poles is much smarter than the average fan. He also knows that players grow frustrated losing and too much losing can hurt the rebuild. It's why he's been so aggressive this year after tearing down the roster upon his arrival last season. Neither Ryan Poles or Matt Eberflus should be judged by last year's record. Simply put, we did not have a competitive team. Part of the rebuild was getting rid of the old and expensive players that filled up the roster from Ryan Pace's tenure. That doesn't happen overnight, but Ryan Poles has done just that in over a year and a half. This roster has been completely overhauled. We have more talent on offense and defense in my opinion. We also have more flexibility, more athleticism, and more playmakers on both sides of the ball. An insane 17 out of 22 starters on this team have been replaced since Ryan Poles took over the job. Looking at the roster in 2021 and looking at it now just two years later, we have 17 new starters out of 22 players. That's 78% of the starting lineup. Only five guys remain. Those five players who were starters in 2021 and still starting this year are Justin Fields, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Jalen Johnson, and Eddie Jackson. That is it. Tevin Jenkins was also around, but he was injured most of his rookie season, and he's switched positions four times since then. But let that sink in. On top of that, Poles has completely overturned most of the 53-man roster as well, with over 40 new players. It's been less than two years, and Ryan Poles has turned over 90% of this roster and 17 of our 22 starters. Now, if you let Justin Fields, Darnell Mooney, and Jalen Johnson go next season like some fans are suggesting, almost nobody would remain. Some of those guys are key pieces. We now have one of the youngest and most athletic rosters in the entire NFL. There's a ton of talent on this team now and core building blocks all all over the roster but they're still very young and haven't had much time to play together yet but it's hard to look at all this talent that Ryan Poles has brought in and not see how bright the future of this team looks other than Valus Jones Jr. it's hard not to love Ryan Poles draft pick history in two years he's brought in Darnell Wright Kyler Gordon Jaquan Brisker Javon Dexter and so many more young talented players Braxton Jones looks like an absolute absolute still out of the fifth round. Even guys like Jatiree Carter and Elijah Hicks have filled in admirably when called upon as backups. Poles has found values every year with players that go undrafted like Jack Sanborn, Tyson Bajan, and Jalen Jones. It's hard to argue that Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham have unique eyes for talent. Then look at the job he's done bringing in players through free agency and trades. DJ Moore and Montez Sweat are two of our best players and both franchise type guys. He's rebuilt our defensive line and linebacker room this offseason and the results have looked promising. I love the direction this roster is heading in and what Ryan Poles is doing. 
Right now, the questions are about the coaching staff. Ryan Poles wasn't able to fully evaluate Matt Eberflus as the head coach last year because he didn't have a front four good enough to run his defense. This offseason, Poles had hoped that he brought in enough talent in the front four to see what Eberflus's defense could do. He signed Unique Ngakwe and Demarcus Walker in free agency and then drafted three defensive tackles as well with Jervon Dexter, Zach Pitt, Pickens and Travis Bell. But as we approach the trade deadline, it was clear to anyone watching that we needed more help at defensive end. Ryan Poles again identified that need and he went out and traded for Montez Sweat. A lot of people don't understand that trade. I heard people who get paid to cover this team for a living call out Ryan Poles and say he wasn't thinking long term with this move. I couldn't believe the lack of common sense I was hearing. Of course Ryan Poles always planned to sign Montez Sweat long term term. I talked about it all week after the trade. Holes and Montez Sweat even said so themselves, but people were still out there assuming he didn't. It was just crazy. There are also people saying that Poles could have kept that second round pick and just got him in free agency. That's just wrong. Montez Sweat had many suitors that would have traded for him and gave him a new contract, or at the very least franchise tagged him. Montez was never going to hit free agency. It's clear to me that some people that cover this team in the media literally have no idea what they're talking about. This is a rebuild. Every single move Ryan Poles makes is always about rebuilding this franchise long term. He's never looking short term or just trying to win this season. He always has the future in mind. Some fans and media simply do not understand this. I have voiced my frustrations on this channel plenty of times about Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze. I keep it real. I don't think either coach is safe and I have legit questions about our entire coaching staff. However, that does not mean I think they should be fired mid-season when we don't have capable replacements on the staff and I also don't think they've had enough time for fair evaluations yet. As I said, we simply cannot judge them for last season. We didn't have enough talent on this roster to be a competitive football team, and the coaches still had these guys playing hard, so I credit them for that. This season has been awful so far, but the coaches haven't had a chance to use all the talent that Ryan Poles acquired yet. Our starting five offensive linemen haven't played a single snap together yet. Our entire secondary has been ravaged by injuries. Our starting QB has been out, and Montez Sweat has only been here two games. And when you take all of that into account, I just think they deserve more time to be evaluated. Both Getze and Eberflus were rookies at their respected positions last year and are still learning themselves. In retrospect, maybe we should have expected more losing, but right now it's fair to think that both of these guys could be fired at the end of the season. However, I think there's a good chance that this team gets some wins down the stretch, builds some momentum, and these coaches stick around next year, at least Matt Eberflus. Losing is contagious, and if they don't figure things out by the end of the season, then it will be a different story. But we still have seven games left, and for the first time of the year, our starting five offensive linemen should be out there this weekend. Justin Fields is also making his return, and this team is finally getting healthy. Knock on wood, let's hope it continues and we can build some momentum down the stretch. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Remember to hit that like button for me, and until next time, bear down.